The minute you, you discover that the love of God has never been about you, it has always been about Him. Then you can lift up holy hands and say, no, it's not because of you. You're too faithful. Do you know how faithful God is? God is so faithful that even in your unfaithfulness, He is still faithful. When the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 35 I desire nothing else No one else but you
think about it. You remember when Adam and Eve were found, they said that we, we, we were naked and so we hid. What was the question that God asked them? Who told you? When we talk about salvation, we say, for whosoever uh -huh. believes. <laughs> you see? It's about who. Wow. Then it asks you, who shall separate? Now the question I want to pose to you. Are you a who? Answer the question, are you a who? Uh -uh. No, you are. Are you a who? Are you not a who? <laughs> a who is a person. Everyone yeah. is a who. You understand? Yeah. So when he says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Uh -huh. Even you are uh -huh. included Hallelujah. in the love. So this morning you're not being nice to me. Hallelujah. One of the scriptures I read is the scripture that says, I will never leave you. No. You know what that means? Even when you're in a mess, in a mess yeah. God is right there with you. Oh, yes. yeah. you, don't, you don't even realize how powerful that statement is. It says that if I have to bring down buildings, to get you to where you're supposed to go. I am not going to leave you and I am not going to forsake you. Listen, even when you feel like you don't want to be in my presence and you claim that you don't even feel me and you don't love me, even in those moments, I will not let anything separate. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That means that even when you get in the way, God will make sure that he finds a way to move you out of the way so that his purposes can be fulfilled. Because when he says that who shall separate us, he says that even I myself, by my own actions, I cannot separate myself from the love of God. Because that love is not dependent on you. That love is dependent on him. It is not dependent on your character. It is dependent on the character of God. It is not dependent on your word. It is dependent on the word of God. You understand what I am telling you? Can we celebrate Jesus this morning? We will not have anything get in the way. having a conversation with Hikaru Connect Group during the week and Prophetess was reminding me of this. I said that there is a place in God called for those who love God. Wow. Wow. And when you are in that place called for those who love God, all things Hallelujah. work together for hey, you. He says all things. Can I can I present this to you very carefully? That even your addiction. Even sicknesses. For if we were not sick, then how could he be rough? All things work together for good. Do you know there are people who are saved and delivered from toxic marriages because of sicknesses? Wow. Wow. People don't even know how God works. There are people who got delivered from toxic marriages because of sickness. Sickness came, you got left. And you cried because of your sickness. Wow. But you did see the years of abuse oh, and patterns that will be passed on to children and trauma that will be passed on to children that God was delivering you from. Do you understand that the confidence we have is the confidence that for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hey. I know God too well to know that even when Paul was persecuting the church, all things. When you discover the love of God, who it truly really is. You know our challenge is we limit God to our seat. Oh, please, can we have your seat? Our, the problem with us is that we limit God to our own thinking and capacities. Okay, sorry. I forgot. Let me receive the children. Sunday school, please come forward. All the Sunday school children, are they here? Or they've already left? Thank you. Sunday school, let them come. Let them come. We pray for them. Amen.
said they want to give a testimony this morning. Amen. 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 to be the teacher of the Sunday school for the head of Sunday school. Please let's put our hands together for the man. So that people know that God is real. Someone hand him a microphone. Yes. From the rising of the sun. There's a lot of church. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'll start with first, uh, like, at the sound team, who are told uh, the familiarity with the apostle, you will not receive you make it uh, so much. So, when you are the first in the Southern Retreat, the first one. Also, you are just seated. And Apostle said, uh, the man I've seen getting a job. Wow. And do not be afraid of the salary to be twice. What wow. So, it was coincidental then, some months later, around two months later, I was called. I got the contract just this week. Wow. Wow. Yes, and uh, just the way he said it, the salary is actually double. Wow. So, our person does prophesy. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Put your hands together for the time. From the rising of the sun to the sun. They will reign at home. Amen. They will reign when they are playing. Amen. They will reign in their dreams. Amen. They will reign with every desire they have in their hearts, Almighty oh Father. We secure their destiny. And we cover the eyes of the enemy right now and we declare that he shall not find them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Let us put our hands together for the kids of the world. Are you well this morning? Yes. Are you sure you're well this morning? Yes. I don't like how cold you are. Yes. I yes. wish I had a son here today. It was unbelievable. But God is good. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of 1 John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. First John. Can I have some more power on this microphone, just this one, if that's possible? First John chapter... Are you there? First John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. This is how it starts. <laughs> It starts on a high note. It starts with that which was from the beginning. Which we have had. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life. Which was with the father and has appeared to us. you reading the Bible I'm reading. Yes. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard 
so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Let me read again. That which we have seen from the beginning, which we have heard with our ears, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. I'll read it again for you to get it. That which was from the beginning, which we have had, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. That which was from the beginning, which we have had, the word comes and we've had it. Then the consequences of hearing it, we see it with our eyes. Uh -huh. And then we look at it. And then we touch it with our hands. Uh -huh. I wish I had people in this morning. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. So this thing which was from the beginning, which we have had, which we have seen with our eyes, and which we have touched with our hands, which we proclaim concerning the word of life, this thing was with the Father. It was with the Father in the beginning and it has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that which we have seen and had. So that you also may have fellowship with us so that you can walk together with us. Listen, fellowship cannot happen unless two people agree. Yes. And so the problem and the challenge that most believers have who have not perceived what you have perceived is that you will be wasting your time trying to explain to them that which you have seen with your eyes. Uh -huh. yes. 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 The hearing of people is limited uh -huh. to their sight. I don't know if you've seen this interesting post that people have been sharing on Reels where it is one statement being said but there are several things written down but whatever you're reading is what you will hear. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Listen, I saw that thing I was like, this is exactly what happens. Yeah. Because the word of God <laughs> uh -huh. the word which you hear that is the one which you will see. Yeah. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have had, which we have seen in our eyes, which was, with which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. And this life was with the in the beginning with the Father. It, it has now appeared to us. Now let's go to the beginning of the Father. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Ay, ay, ay. And we are going to see whether we'll be able to get to Genesis chapter 3. Ay, ay. Are you ready for this? Yes. If your neighbor is new, just turn to them and tell the neighbor... This is where you put on your seatbelts. <laughs> check your shocks if they are proper. If it's a man, tell them, check your shocks. Are they okay? Because we are going to experience turbulence. I had a pastor once say, if you're looking for the book of Genesis, don't worry, it is right after the book of Matthew. When you open the New Testament after Matthew, you will find Genesis there. And we are reading Genesis chapter 1. And it says, in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Then he says, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Is the screen working? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Get ready with that thing that I sent on WhatsApp. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then verse 3 says, then God said, let there be light and there was light uh -huh. now here's a problem because the bible says here in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth are you ready to learn yes. come on talk to me talk yes. back to me are you ready to learn yes. are you ready for me to show yes. you something that is going to work on your mind okay yes. fine in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth i want you to understand this beginning that we are talking about because the title of my sermon today is the beginning of god In the beginning, God, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Do you have the Hebrew translation that I sent you? Please, if you have it, just share it with me. 
share it on the do you have it? Can you present it there? Because I want them to read the actual words so that they know I'm not teaching anything else. But this is going to be amazing. By the time we are done with this service, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. Amen. 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 It will just be like the Warriors have won the championship again. Yeah. Are you ready to win the championship again? Now, this is the Hebrew direct translation from the Hebrew. Just put it back. Thank you. That is the same Genesis chapter 1. What is it saying? It says, that and the earth was with was formless, was formless and void. The word formless there is the word tohu. Are you seeing that? Yes. Come on, look oh, at me. Are yes, you seeing that? Yes. It's the word tohu. And then and void is wabohu. So it says that when God created the world, it was it was tohu. Wa bohu. You understand? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Send, open the other one that I that I sent you right now. Then we are going to take off and fly. Go, go up, go up, go up. This is Isaiah 45, verse 18. This is what it says. For that says Yahweh, continue, who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it. He has established it, not in Tohu. So he says that when God created the world in the beginning, Genesis tells us that and the world was without form and void. Yeah. But between Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis uh, verse 1 and G- Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2, it could have been a million years. Yeah. Why? Because we see that when God created the world, it was not in the womb. Oh, yeah. wow. For in him there was light yeah. and darkness was not found in him. So if corruption cannot be found in God, how could he make something that was corrupted? Now please understand what I'm trying to teach you now. How could he make something that was to who? When he is a God who is, does not have any darkness in him. Are you ready? He says that it was to who? What? Who? Now you see these things now when you go and tell people things like this, you confuse them. Yeah. This is how you met your boyfriend. You just tell them, ah, my God does not understand. <laughs> now let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go to Job. Let's go to the book of Job. Harvest 38. I want to show you something. Rampa Kalimun Sayadai. Lekerema Kunta Shama Bonti Yadai Adima Ranku Palina. Are you there? Job chapter chapter 38, verse 7. Are you ready? Please, please. Somebody who has it, just read if you, if you found it. Because of time. You have a microphone? Job, Job, the book of work. Job. Job chapter 38, verse 7. Mm-hmm. While the morning stars sang together and all the. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Go, go up a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, verse 4? Yes. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Mm-hmm. Tell me if you understand. Mm. Who marked off its dimensions? Mm-hmm. Surely you know. Mm. Who stretched a measuring line across it? Uh-huh. On what were its footings set? Mm. On who laid its cornerstone? Uh-huh. While the morning stars sang together mm-hmm. and all the angels shouted for joy? Now, wait, wow. wait. So when he says, when the morning stars sang together and all the angels clapped their hands, so what he's telling us is uh-huh. when God was laying the foundations of the earth uh-huh. you know in Genesis creation we don't see the creation of water wow. uh-huh. let's read it let's read it Genesis Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. No, it's there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. 
And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. When you continue there, you don't see anywhere that God says, let there be water. He calls the animals out of the water. But he doesn't say, let there be water. He doesn't say, let there be earth. He calls animals out of the earth. So it tells us that the creation of the world did not begin in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Verse 2 you understand? That this thing began prior to that. And we know that because when we come to read and God said, let there be light, and we read Job and God made man, we read Job and we see that when God created the world and put its foundations together, when he was laying the foundations of the earth and measuring with a measuring line, when he was doing that, all the sons of God were clapping their hands. So it's to tell us that Lucifer must have been among them to clap his hands together with the angels. So it tells us that the creation of man and the creation that we now see was created after wow. the fall of Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are you understanding this? Yeah. Because the problem with us is we think the beginning is in Genesis. Is it too deep? Just look at your neighbor who is new and look at them if they are drowning or something like that and help them. You can send them a lifeguard or something like that. But there's only the call to me a float. Ezekiel chapter 28. Let's read something there. And I hope I don't get ahead of myself. Ezekiel 28 verse 12 to 17. If you're there, just read it out loud. Ezekiel 28 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Verse 12 to 17. Uh -huh. Son of man, mm -hmm. take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre mm -hmm. and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Mm -hmm. You are the seal of perfection. Listen, uh -huh. you are the seal of perfection. Uh -huh. Continue. Full of wisdom uh -huh. and perfect in beauty. Uh -huh. You were in Eden, uh -huh. the garden of God. Uh -huh. Every precious stone adorned you. Mm. Carnelian, chrysolite, mm. and emerald, mm -hmm. topaz, onyx, and jasper, mm -hmm. lapis lazuli. Turquoise and burial. Mm. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. Mm. On the day you were created, they were prepared. <laughs> yes, come on, continue. You were anointed as a guardian chariot. Uh -huh. For so I adorned, I ordained you. Who are we reading about? Lucifer. Uh -huh. Continue. You were on the holy mount of God. Uh -huh. You walked among the fiery stones. Mm. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created, till wickedness was found in you. Mm -hmm. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence, mm -hmm. and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace mm -hmm. from the mount of God, mm -hmm. and I expelled you, mm -hmm. guardian cherub, mm -hmm. from among the fiery stones. Mm -hmm. Your heart became proud mm -hmm. on account of your beauty, mm -hmm. and you corrupted your wisdom mm -hmm. because of your splendor. Mm -hmm. So I threw you to the earth. Mm -hmm. I made a spectacle of you before kings. Mm -hmm. By your many sins and dishonest street, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. So I made a fire come out from you, mm -hmm. and it consumed you, mm -hmm. and I reduced you to the ashes of the ground mm -hmm. in the sight of all who were watching. Mm -hmm. All the nations who knew you mm -hmm. are upheld at you. Aya. You have come to a horrible end. And will be no more. Now, you have read. Yes. Let's go step by step. Verse mm -hmm. 7 it says, You would think we are not talking about the devil here. He says that I am going to, uh, wait, wait, where is it? Verse 12. Yeah? He says, Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him that this is what the sovereign Lord says. You are the model of perfection. The word perfection there that is used is the word tamim, which means pure, which means that there is nothing wrong with him. Wow. Holy is the word that, it, that, that it's talking about here. Wow. When it's talking about you, but the seal of perfection, it means of blameless. In other words, you could look at the devil and you would not find anything to accuse him wow. with. Wow. The 
devil will tell you something. That word there means integral. And you will say, I am sorry, sir, I am wrong. You are right. They looked at him and he was the seal of perfection. You would think we are talking about something else here. Then he says, Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Then he says, You are in Eden. Wait. I thought Eden was in Genesis chapter. You understand what I'm talking about now? You are in Eden, but he was not in Eden, the garden that was given to man. He was in Eden, the garden of God. So he tells us that before God gave Adam this Eden that he took, there is another Eden. And in Eden, there is a garden called the garden of God. And the garden of God is where Lucifer was in. Then he says, every precious stone that don't be rubies, topaz, all those emeralds. Now the same stones, when you now look forward, in the Old Testament, the priests used to wear a garment, and I, I wish you could get a picture of that. They used to wear a chain, and it had 12 stones to symbolize that they have power and authority to represent the children of Israel when they approach wow. the holies of holies. Wow. So he tells us here that when he says he was adorned, he, that word there is sakak, which means that you were covered with what you could be able to approach the light. Praise Jesus. So it's telling us here now that Lucifer could approach. These things, I tell you, we need conferences to dissect this thing. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 16. He says that he lives in an approachable life. God lives in an approachable, in an, you cannot approach the light. Why? Because it's too bright. But he's telling us that Lucifer was adorned with every stone on top of the rubies and all those things. Uh -huh. Your settings and mountains were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub. Hey, so he's anointed. Why do you think David said to the man, Why, how dare you touch the anointed one of God? Ah. You do remember that when, when Daniel, in Daniel, when Daniel was praying and Gabriel was to deliver a message to Daniel, when he came down with the message, he was stopped by the prince of Persia. That Michael had to come and wrestle with the prince of Persia so that the message could be passed on to Daniel. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. If you're new, just bear with us. Just, I hope your show comes over as a working man. Now, when we go now to the book of Jude and we read of Michael when he's in contest, in contest with Lucifer over the body of Moses, when they were fighting over the body of Moses, Michael said, I cannot dare attack you. Wow. Wow. <sighs> okay, now let's read so that people don't say I'm reading my own Bible. That's in Jude chapter 1 verse 9. Jude chapter 1 verse 9. Please, very quickly, if anyone finds it. Are you well? I'm a mepoder. We can just preach about the blood. We can talk about the cross of Calvary. We can do that. Are you, are you, we can even talk about money. And you will receive right now in Jesus. Do you understand? We can do that. The book of Jude. Jude chapter 1 verse 9. Okay, it's only one, one chapter. Eh? What does it say? But even the archangel Michael, uh -huh. when he was disputing with the disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, uh -huh. did not himself dare uh -huh. to condemn him for slander, <gasps> but said, the "Wait, Lord, he did not dare to condemn him for slander. Why? Because he is aware. Do not touch the anointed." Hey! What did he say? Ah! What did he say? The Lord rebuke you. Come on now. Ah! He said, "Let God Himself deal with you." He said, "God is going to deal." With Let's go back to what we were reading. Where were we? Does it kill? Just go back there. Continue reading. What does the next part say? Verse. Verse 12. 
about 13 or Yes, it was 12, 13, 14. Ah, is his name. Yeah. The devil is not his name, it's a job description. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> and the devil means the one who pounces and pounces and pounces until he gets through. Yeah. That's why the devil is persistent. When he was tempting Jesus, he said after after he tempted Jesus, when he left, scripture says that he left to come back another day. That means the devil never gives up. If you go into a context of giving up, you will give up before he does. That's why you will find that a person who is struggling with something will be tempted by the same thing over and over and over again. That now he has even devised things they call algorithms on Instagram. And now all of a sudden, the thing that you struggle with the most is the one you suggested for the most. What do you think he's doing? He's pouncing and pouncing until he gets through. So the challenge as a child of God is for you to stay out of the world. Because you're in it, but you're not of it. So if you don't understand where you are from, you will settle from where you are. How many of you know that if you don't know who you are, people will define you? Have you ever had people try to define you? Someone tells you, ah, try this alcohol, you will like it. How do you know? Come on, I don't know why this church is too quiet this morning. Come on. Doris is my only person who is talking to me now. Please talk back to me. It's so funny because you will discover when you begin to find yourself and find out who you are in the kingdom of God and in the light of God, you will discover that the person you are is not who you were created to be. Let me tell you, since you were born, what the world has been trying to do was to get you to conform to the patterns of the world. Nobody ever taught you what your identity is. In other words, what they did is they tried to give you an identity that pleased them. What am I saying? That as a child, you just told yourself you were talking all the time. And if you didn't have a discerning parent, they would slap you to keep quiet. But they didn't know that you were a preacher who was just preparing to get to where you are going. And so a person who had a voice got <laughs> a person who had a voice became a quiet person because their voice was taken away from them. And you think the devil is asleep. What is this trying to do? He's trying to give you a definition that is not about you. And what he does is he keeps bouncing. So your parents shut you up. You go to school and they, and they bully you to try and shut you up. And then you go to church and they don't give you a platform to try and shut you up. And then you stand up and people look at you and they don't say amen to try and shut you up. But if you don't have an understanding of who you are, before the foundations of the world were laid, then you will settle for whatever people will define you to be. I refuse to be settled. I refuse to be defined by men. I choose to be defined by the one who made me and the one who called me. So I will not be shy. So you settle for what people define you as. And some of you even assist them in giving a faulty definition to yourself. That which we have had. That which we have seen with our eyes. That which we have touched with our hands. Let's continue. What is it? You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fairy stones. Question. If Lucifer was a light bringer, who was he bringing that light to? Because God exists in an approachable light. So he was approaching the mountain of God to draw light. Where was he taking that light to? Continue. You are blameless in your ways. You are blameless in your ways. This is the devil. Blameless. Continue. From the day you were created mm -hmm. till wickedness was found in you. Mm -hmm. Through your widespread trade, mm -hmm. you were filled with violence. Trade with who? Uh -huh. <laughs> who was he doing business with? Continue. You were filled with violence mm. and you sinned. 
So I drove you in disgrace mm -hmm. from the mountain of God, uh -huh. and I expelled you, guardian cherub, mm -hmm. from among the fairy stones. Mm -hmm. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty. Wow. Your heart wow. became proud wow. on account of your beauty. So God made him so beautiful that because of the beauty he had, isn't that the temptation we have? Yeah. That the glory that God has given you causes you to be drawn away from His presence. Yeah. How mighty men fall. Because what God gave to you now becomes a place and a point of pride. Hey. That's why when we were singing that song, I knew it has taken the hand of God to get me to where I am. Yeah. And I cannot even for one second begin to think that I have earned this. Yeah. Listen, I am not any better than you. We have the same covenant. But because of a beauty. So now when he talks about Lucifer and his beauty, Lucifer thrives in aesthetics. The word is cosmetics. And so, what the devil likes, I had, I had, I had a, a, a man of God teach this once, he was saying, that the devil does not mind it if the church is built on beauty. Wow. 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 Okay, just look at me direct if this one is attacking you. So you left a church because they didn't have any delights. Because the singer was off key. And because the seats were not as fancy as you're used to the seats wow. being fancy. Wow. And you gauge and you measure the presence of God based on the beauty of the building. Wow. Just look at me direct. If we had fog lights in here and we had three white lights and LED lights, some of you would be slain to the floor right now. And the question is, who are you worshipping? I told you one day I'll teach you about music. And I thank God because, you know, in my pursuit of music, I began, I started learning how to produce music. And one day I produced a song and I took it to the producer and he told me, ah, this song is not in for 40 hearts. I said, for 40 what? For 40 hearts. I said, which hearts is it in? I don't know. Then he said, it's supposed to be in for 40 hearts or 300 and what hearts? I said, why? What is the point? Then he says, it's a regulation of the frequencies that music are supposed to be played in. I was like, ah, explain to me. Then he says, gospel music, most of them are played during 300 and something hearts. Who knows? Something hearts. And then other songs are played in 440 hearts. Which was a regulation that was passed because people were using frequencies in music to manipulate the behaviors of people. Wow. Yeah. So it is actually said that during Hitler's time, they used to use play frequencies in crowds yeah. to get them to become angry without them knowing. Then you begin to discover that all ambulances, their sound, they share the same frequency. And the effect of that frequency, it, is, it makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are you understanding now? Yeah. And it says that when you play a song in for 40 hertz, it makes the character of a person susceptible to be manipulated. Wow. That's why when you listen to a song played in for 40 hertz, Talking about violence. All of a sudden you feel like you can beat everyone in your estate. I'm not afraid. Jesus said. You look on a stair too much or check and you can there's nothing you cannot do. Frequencies. And so the question is, is your worship attached to a frequency? Because listen, this is what people say. I was not on my knees because I was not feeling the song. Okay, now we know. We know who you're worshipping. Because if me singing in the, in the correct key would make you go down on your knees, so who are you bowing down before? So some of us have worshipped worship leaders. In the name of worshipping God. One day he told you that some of you listen to gospel, you listen to worship music. Oh, no. you, no you wake up and oh, you no longer do yeah. that, amen. Yeah. You 
you wake up and you listen to worship music. You listen. I, you know, man of God, may I just wake up in the morning and I listen to my worship music. You listen to worship music. Worship music was now recorded for you. It was made for you now. To listen to it. The devil keeps pouncing and pouncing and pouncing until he gets to. The devil has no problem with you coming into an aesthetic church with a sound that is arranged properly to fit your needs and to fit your emotions. Listen, guys, it is very easy for someone to mess with your emotions. Everyone knows everyone needs money. Everyone knows everyone needs joy. Everyone knows everyone needs their family members delivered. So it's very easy for me to custom make a sound and say God said and God didn't say anything I am saying. But because it makes you feel better about yourself, you will continue coming. This is what scripture says. That in the last days there will be a hunger, not for the word of God, but for the hearing of the word of God. Then he says that men will make teachers for themselves who will tell them what their tingling ears want to hear. So the problem is not with the false prophet. The problem is with the people listening to the false prophet. Because as long as you're creating a demand for it, there will keep on being a supply for it. And so you will keep complaining, why are there fake pastors? Why are there false prophets? But the reason they are there is because you keep going there and giving them money. But the person who is teaching the word of God walks around with torn shoes because you wouldn't so accede to what he was saying. Because you're mastered and you're hidden and your eyes have been blinded by aesthetics. So now we measure anointing based on the suit that the man of God is wearing. Aesthetics. We measure grace based on the car that the man of God is driving. If John the Baptist came here, how many of you would sit down to listen to his song? Selah. Sorry, let's continue. What does he say? Are you, are, you, are you getting yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Let's continue. What does he say? And you corrupted your wisdom mm. because of your splendor. Yes. So I threw you to the earth uh-huh. and I made a spectacle of you before kings. Uh-huh. By your many sins and dishonest truth. Which kings? He made a spectacle out of him. Before kings. Which kings? Continue. By your many sins and dishonest trade, uh-huh. you have desecrated your sanctuary. Uh-huh. So I made a fire come out from you, mm-hmm. and it consumed you, and I reduced you to the ashes on the ground, mm-hmm. in the sight of all who were watching. Mm-hmm. All the nations who knew you mm-hmm. are appealed by you at you. Oh, which nations? If this was the fall of Lucifer, which nations is he talking about? Continue. What does it say? You have come to a horrible end and mm. will be no more. Amen. Then we read um, Let's go to Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9 and then we are, we are going to read. Isaiah 40 verse 12. Isaiah, Isaiah 14 verse 12. Continue. Someone please read. Isaiah 14 verse 12. Mm. Uh, how, how you have fallen from heaven, mm. morning star, mm-hmm. son of the dawn. So, when he says that when God created the world, the morning stars clapped. Uh-huh. How does he call him? Continue. What does he say? How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, mm-hmm. son of the dawn? Mm-hmm. You have been cast down to the earth, mm-hmm. you who once laid low the nations. Mm-hmm. You said you who once laid low the nations. Continue, what does it say? You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. On the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon, mm-hmm. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. Mm-hmm. I will make myself like the Most High. Uh-huh. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, uh-huh. to the depths of the pit. Mm-hmm. 
those who see you stare at you. They ponder your fate. Mm. Is this the man who shook the earth? Imagine. Now it tells us that when we see Lucifer, when you look at him, nations will wonder, is this the small thing? Hallelujah. Is this the is this the one that ruined the nations? Uh, I don't know if you're ready for this. Yeah. Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed cities? Who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory. Everyone is in his own house. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you say, Is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Go to Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. What does it say? Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. Mm. What has been will be again. Mm. What has been done will be done again. Mm. There is nothing new under the sun. Hey. Okay. What will be was. Uh -huh. What was will be. There is nothing new under the sun. Uh. When God found it, said, I will not destroy the world with water again. Uh. When you read that word in the Hebrew, it means that it was in my character to destroy the world with water. Uh -huh. But God vowed that never again will I destroy the world with water. Then it says in Genesis, when you continue to the creation of man, he says, now let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. Could it be that when he says, let us make man in our own image? Uh -huh. Is it possible that there were other men made but not in the image of God? Because now he made this one in his image. upon galaxies upon galaxies the Milky Way is just one galaxy uh -huh. do you think that you are the only creation that God has created <laughs> now I submit that to you very carefully I'm just submitting it very carefully I'm just drawing it out there for you to ponder upon it and to think upon it and maybe study and do more research you see now when you read the word of God like this it excites you you understand yeah. It, it, it challenges your intellect. That's why I said when you're coming to the city, you have to at least have some level of education. <laughs> Otherwise, you will drown. You will drown somewhere. So that degree was not for nothing. God was preparing you for a crazy man of God like this. Was coming to it. So he says, are you understanding? He says that this man was made in my own image and in my own likeness. Could it be? I'm just saying, could it be? For those of you who love, love national geographics and all those, could it be that aliens? Yeah, actually, actually. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, that one is not doctrine. That one I've just thrown it to, for you to think about it. That one is not gospel truth. It's just for your own consumption. Carefully consum consume it carefully. What was from the beginning, what we have had, what we have seen with our eyes. We open John chapter 1 verse 1. Let's read that for a minute. Uh -huh. So if in the beginning Jesus was with God and he was the light and darkness could not comprehend the light. So this darkness that he's talking about that the world was formless and void where did it come from? So now we get the explanation from there was a person who created evil. Now I use that word very carefully because the chaos and the void that was there was made because of now we see the fall of Lucifer. I may be in the right church this yeah. morning. 
Are you understanding me? Yeah. But Lucifer could not have created evil. Uh-huh. Because if he creates anything, then he becomes God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And God could not create evil. Because if he creates evil, then we can say that he takes the role of the devil. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So now if we have what in, 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 in public speaking we call tension yeah. in the text. Because now evil has to appear from somewhere. But God cannot create it. Because then he will become the devil. And the devil cannot create it because then he will become God. So then evil, how does it come? Because of time, let's just finish for a Come on guys. It's late, we have to go. Okay. What happens is, it is possible for you to take two things that are good for you separately. Uh-huh. But when you combine the two of them together, yeah. those of you who learned chemistry, my brothers the other day were trying to explain to me something in chemistry I didn't get. I just feel like chemistry was, hey, chemistry, uh-huh. was it necessary? It was, it was the only chemistry I understand uh-huh. is the one between me and my wife. Uh-huh. All the other chemistry. Uh-huh. Please, don't, don't, don't excite me. I can just leave you here and go home. <laughs> okay. Anyway, please focus. It is possible for you to take two things that are good for you separately. Uh-huh. But when you take the two of them together, Kunashi, uh-huh. you understand? I don't know what example can I give. Yes? Salt and salt together with sugar. Yeah. Give me an example. Somebody please give me an example. What two things when you mix them together they create drama? Oil and water. How do they create drama? They just don't mix. But I'm looking, okay, I've gotten an example. Remember when you used to go to the doctor and they give you certain antibiotics and they tell you these antibiotics when you take them, please don't drink milk. But if you drink the milk alone, it is good for you. When you drink the water alone, it is good for you. But if you combine the two of them together, they struggle. Are you understanding now? So for evil to be created, what Lucifer did is he took something that was good. Mixed two things that were not supposed to be mixed together. And then evil was created. So he cannot take credit for the creation. Because to create, you need to make something out of nothing. Praise the name of the living God. And that is the beauty of our God. Because our God is the only one who has the ability to make something out of nothing. So then the word which was from the beginning was all God needed for him to make everything that we see. Let me read for you one scripture then I preach for five minutes. This one is going to be good. Are you ready? Looking for the scripture that says that he who ascended also descended. He who descended also ascended above all the heavens so that he can feel all things. I'm looking for that scripture. If somebody finds it before me. Are you learning something? Yes. Read it please. You can read Ephesians 4.10 uh-huh. uh, New King James He who descended is also the one who descended Far above all the heavens That mm-hmm. he might fill all things mm-hmm. I continue mm-hmm. And he himself gave some to be apostles Some mm-hmm. prophets Wait, before you go to where he gave us That part, the, the part before He says that he who did what? He who descended uh-huh. Is also the one who ascended uh-huh. Far above all the heavens uh-huh. That he might fill all things so he tells us that God does not live in heaven unlike popular belief (laughs) 
mentioned in the text. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the point is, if he created the heavens and the earth, it means he does not exist in his own creation. You understand now? Because the heavens were made, it was part of what he made. So you cannot limit him to the heavens. But now we have a problem because when Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said that, uh, what did he say? He said, our Father who art in heaven. Okay. Then we go to Psalms 110. Then we see something else very interesting. Go to Psalms 110. I think it's verse 1 if I'm not wrong. Let me see if I can find it. We need to study this Bible. Like I wish we could have like five hours just to, to dissect it and ask questions and, and, and go through with it. You understand? This Psalms 110 or something. I think verse 1. What does he say? Just read it. Verse 1. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. What? Just read it again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so which one is Lord? Which one is my Lord? Which one? <laughs> he who ascended descended is also the one who ascended above all the heavens so that he can feel all things. So now he tells us here that my Lord said to my Lord, it means God stepped out of himself. And then God said to God. Continue, what does he say? Sit at my right hand uh -huh. till I make your enemies your footstool. Wait! So God is by himself. Then the Lord says to my, steps out of himself. Then he says to himself, Sit at my right hand until I make you my enemy, your enemy is my footstool. Very interesting story right there. Then here it tells us that the one who descended, which one do we know who descended? Come on. Who do we know who descended? Who do we know who ascended? He did not just ascend to heaven. He ascended above all the heavens so that he can feel all things. That means if there is anything that exists, God feels everything that exists. So if God feels all things that exist, then he tells us that all things can work together for you because the one who feels everything, he is my God. The one who feels everything, he is my God. The one who does not need a word to create a tire masala. The one who doesn't need nothing to create. You know what that means? It means that you don't need a degree to be successful in life. Because the one who created a tire masala, you don't need anything. Because the one who feels all things, he ascended to the point that there is nothing that exists that he does not inhabit. He controls everything. He controls everything. Then he says, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies mine. Listen, when he says sit at my right hand, that thing is not just about sitting position. The right hand of a king represents his power. So it means that if the king wants anything done, he will just whisper to the man who is standing on his right hand. And the right hand man will go forth and he will establish and fulfill everything that needs to be fulfilled. Why? Because he's the hand that carries power. So now it tells us that Jesus who is seated in the right hand of God, he says, I want you to take this position. Be in my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. In other words, God is saying, I am delegating power to you so that you can use it however you will use it until your enemies become your footstool. So what does the one who ascended does? He descends and comes down. He descends and comes down. And he comes down and he walks as a man. But what they did not know, he was not just walking among us men. He was carrying delegated power. The power of God. That's why he said to the man, that if you see me, you have seen the Father. Why? Because I am the one who is representing him. And whatever he can
can do, I can do. So you don't need to get a word from him as long as I am here and I am at his right hand. Whatever I say, he has said. When you see me, you have seen him. And the one who descended also, I am a God. He made himself of no reputation. And then he went to the lowest form, the lowest touch that a man can get to. And the enemy thought he was winning. But what he did not know is this man was carrying delegated power. And so he went to the cross. And the cross was placed in Golgotha. Let me catch up the people who were not here during the time we were talking about the Nephilim. Scripture tells us, bro, let me talk to you. You know, your father, I've been trying to control myself this whole time. It's difficult, but it's okay. Um, so now scripture tells us that there was a prophecy that was made by God. In the beginning, when man fell, God said to the woman that this your seed shall crush the head of the seed of the serpent. And the seed of the serpent shall bruise the head, the heel of your seed. So we talk about the seed of the woman, but we forget to talk about the seed of the serpent. Are you following now? Now this seed of the serpent, who is it? Aha, praise the name of the living God. And then we go forward and we see that the angels who descended together with Lucifer, they saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. Oh yeah. Like the daughters in Prince City. Yeah. He saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. And so they conceived with them and they bore children and these children were called the Nephilim. Yeah. And they were giants. Yeah. Seeds of the serpent. Yeah. Hey. hey. When Jesus was talking to them one time, he said to them that, they said that Abraham is our father. They said, which Abraham? Yeah. Abraham is not your father. Uh -huh. Then they said, but what do you mean? We are the children of Abraham. Then God is our father. They said, no, God is not your father. Because if God was your father, he wouldn't be doing the things you are doing. Then he says, then who is your father? Then you are the, of your son, the devil. He called it right there. There are people in this world who walk amongst us who are the seed of the serpent. And their characteristics is they have no ability. They cannot hear the word of God. They cannot understand it. And so their job is to get people like you who are listening to the word of God and plant seeds of doubt to try and bruise your heel. Why? Because they know that there is an assignment over your feet. The bruising of the heel was because the enemy was supposed to be you. And so when David killed Goliath, he carried his head, took it to Jerusalem. And they dumped it in a place called the place of Scar. So the place where the head was thrown, the head of Goliath of God, was called Goliath of God. The place of the skull of Goliath of God is now what is called Golgotha. He says that you shall crush his head. And so the one who was on assignment was taken to the cross. And on Calvary Street, the enemy thought he was winning. He thought he had finally got him. But what he did not see is the position of his foot and the position of the head of the seed of the serpent to tell you that whatever the enemy whatever the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it around to good. You are not just a child who doesn't have an understanding. You are not a man without a maker. You are not a man walking around without a covenant. Listen to me, child of God. You have a better covenant than the covenant that Lucifer had. Sit down, sit down. Let me, let me tell you this. Let me finish with this. Listen. Why was it, why did Lucifer find the need to sneak into the Garden of Eden and convince man to fall? Hey. Are you ready for this? Why did he find the need to go and convince them to fall? Let me put it another way. Why does your ex-girlfriend feel the urgency, the need? Now, just when you're discovering God, now she feels like I was wrong. And if he or she is the seed of the serpent, they pounce and they pounce and they pounce. Why do you think the invitations keep coming? When you were reckless and you were just walking about your business, they didn't care about you. Where 
hear about the inboxes then. Listen, you need to be wise. You need to understand. Why is it that your sister finds the need to argue with you just before something? Think about these things properly. Yeah. Why do you just wake up in the morning when you are supposed to go to the house of God? Somehow you just feel like you don't have the strength. Yeah. Wow. He knew these ones they are dangerous. Yeah. Why are they dangerous? Listen, listen to his description. He was perfect. The seal of perfection. Wow. Yeah. Beauty and splendor was his thing. You know what? You thought you were the most amazing one I could be. I'm about to make others. And these ones, I'm not going to make them like you. I made you with stones and pipes of gold and everything. These ones, I'm going to make them different. So how is he going to make us? He says, I'm going to make them in my image. Then he says that God formed man out of the dirt of the earth. Yeah. That is not creation. Uh, yes. uh, that is for me. So how did the creation of man become? Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. When we bury people, we say dust goes to dust. Yes. We are returning whatever was borrowed out of it. So he says that God breathed through the thing that he formed. He breathed into it. The breath that God breathed into man was not created. It was a part of himself. Let me put it in other words so that you can be able to understand it. Your sibling needs a kid. Then you remove your kidney and you put it in them. That kidney is not created. It is a part of you. And there's an argument we once had in law school where we were arguing, when does a person actually die? A person who has donated an organ, when does he die? If you ask me, because now we ask, we have an understanding of all spirits, all the body, parades, and all these things. But it's real, the, the kidney is still alive. <laughs> so listen, the breath of God that he breathed into man was not created, it was a part of God. Then he says that by God, the presence of the breath of God inside the body of that man became a living soul. So the soul is what was actually created. And that's why when we go out, we go out to win souls. Are you understanding now? Because this, that is not what we are winning. We are not trying to win the the, the body. We are trying to win the soul. What is the soul? What does it contain? Will, emotions, Feelings. Are you understanding me now? Yeah. So that when we win the mind, the will, and the emotions of a man, then the man, when he subjects his will, uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, when he subjects his will, uh, his emotions, uh, and his what? His feelings to God, then we say the man is saved. So you can walk around claiming you're born again all you want to. But as long as your soul is not submitted, as long as your will is not submitted, as long as your feelings are not submitted, God knows how you feel every morning when you wake up. As long as that feeling is not submitted, guys. Men born as we Ladies, God knows how you feel. He understands. But as long as your will, your mind, your emotions are not submitted to him, then you're all born again. And so the question is, the man that was created is the soul. Uh 
So now, which one is in the likeness of God? It certainly could not be the dad. But there's a mystery there because uh, Bishop Baron Ash used to say that when man could not be like God, God became like man so that still man could be like God. You understand? But the image you are made out of is not the image of the soil, man. Are you understanding now? So it means that your soul. Oh, wow. So you look at the character of God. You discover that, wait, will. For all things work together for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. So it means that my will should be submitted to His will. Hallelujah. Everything was made for Him and by Him. Hallelujah. So there's something that I wanted to fulfill. So the nature that I have that is in, in synchrony with God is in his soul, in my soul. Listen. What is in your soul? Mind, will, emotion. Why does scripture tell you let this mind be in you also which was also in Christ Jesus? That means that the part of you that is like God is your mind. It's your will. It's your emotions. And so when you approach the devil and you try and rebuke him, what does he check? To say Jesus we know. And to say Paul we know. What does he check? Do you have his mind? Are you doing his will? Are you touched by the things that touch his heart? That's why during yesterday, during the South Team retreat, when Pastor Maureen was giving her testimony, Mama cried. I'm sharing it because she shared it in public. She said that her child was born with so many complications. Then discovered that the child has diabetes. And this pastor was serving during the office for three days she didn't sleep. She's part of the Secretariat of Work Assemblies. And another child gets healed of diabetes than her own child. And yes, she said, she said in her heart that I will never let anything stop me from serving God. I always use this as an example. The day my dad died, I was on a pulpit preaching. Are you touched by the things that catch the heart of God? Or are you the person who is going to throw a fit because your bills were not paid on time? So when you come before the enemy in your time to rebuke him, what he checks is your submission. Yes. Can come here and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he loves me. But the question is, would you treat the person you love the way you treat? to say for some of us, God is like a genie in a jar. We just wrap him like this and we want him to come out and we make our three wishes and we move on. But the point is, is your will submitted to his will? That is the posture of a person who is born again. That's why he says that, oh, sorry, I'm digressed, sorry. No, you see why we need a conference. You see now, this is why Lucifer is so afraid of man. Because the man is not only the light bringer. He who descended is also the one who ascended above all the heavens so that he can fill all things. Then immediately after that he says that he gave some to be apostles. Whatever light he was bringing to me is the same light I am bringing to you. Because that which was from the beginning, that which we have had with our ears, that which we have seen with our eyes, that which we 
have touched with our hands. Ah, that is what we share with people so that they can be part of our fellowship to understand that there is a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly abundant beyond what we could ask or even imagine. So before the beginning of the beginning, the one who existed with God in the beginning, the one who was with him, the one who stepped out of himself and descended, is also the one who has given to us the power to declare this very same word. And the same word that was with the Father is the same word that we are speaking right here. And I thank God because of how he operates. So the Mayan, when God was orchestrating your job to come at this time, and he was causing you to come and testify this Sunday, is because he wanted someone to get this message. That the words that we speak, their spirit and their life, they move out, they accomplish things, they open doors, they build families, they restore marriages, they restore relationships, they heal the people who are broken, they deliver people who are oppressed. This word that we are speaking is the one that casts out the demon, demonic spirits and delivers people from oppression. This very word that we are preaching is the one that gives life to people, is the one that delivers nations, is the one that we have people in here who have an understanding of what the word of God is. The same that existed with him before the beginning. Can you declare that word over your life? What has the enemy been trying to say to you? For some of you, yeah. the matter of your job, the matter of your employment is settled. It comes with fear and it comes with faith. The time has come. God has seen your submission, He has seen your heart of service. And your time to collect your reward has come. It is not because of anything, but because of the heart that you have demonstrated before God. The season of your toiling is over. God is going to raise you up. He's going to ashamed your enemies. And He's going to cause you to be lifted up. Your hands will touch wealth. Your hands will handle wealth. Your, your hands will buy things and cars and houses you will not even imagine. Your family will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the word that we are speaking. It is life. Someone to prophetess the man who just sing that song, How I Love Jesus. You prophetess the man because he found me, oh, I love Jesus.